Okay, hey guys and gals, good day to you all, God bless you, and welcome to this family Bible study. In Exodus chapter 34, the previous lecture, we had Moses' sixth ascent up Mount Sinai, uh, the covenant and laws repeated, and Moses' sixth descent. Now, we're going to actually finish the book of Exodus today. We're going to summarize chapters 35 through 40, almost all the way uh, to the end of 40, and we're going to just pick it up at the very end of 40, because in chapters 35 through 40, we're just, uh, we're having the making of the tabernacle and all the vessels thereof, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offerings, the labor, etc. And we've already been through that in the previous chapters, so I'm just going to summarize uh, chapters 35 through most of chapter 40 and then we're just going to pick it up with the last few verses of chapter 40 to complete the book of exodus today so with that um father i ask you to open eyes open ears this day and let us receive the wisdom you would have us receive from your word so in yeshua's precious name we're going to get right into it so in exodus chapter 35 we had the making of the tabernacle and the artificers uh, chosen, the, the ones chosen who, who would construct the tabernacle and teach the children of Israel uh, the skills that they needed. Um, of course, the wisdom they got to, to perform those things come from God. And so in Exodus chapter 35, Moses gathered all the children together and took offerings for the making of the real uh, proper tabernacle. Remember, up until this time, we just had a, uh, a tent serving as the tabernacle. And the artificers were chosen for the construction of the tabernacle, that being Bezalel and Aholiab, and every wise-hearted man, which would be those who loved God, were chosen to construct the tabernacle. In Exodus chapter 36, we had the work carried out and the tabernacle made. In verse 14, we had the covering of the tent made. <clears throat> Verses 20 through 30 of chapter 36, we had the boards made. In verses 31 through 34, the bars were made. In verses 37 and 38, the hanging for the entrance was made. In Exodus chapter 37, in verses 1 through 5, the Ark of the Testimony was made, the Ark of the Covenant. Verses 6 through 9, the Mercy Seat and the Cherubims were made. Verses 10 through 15 of chapter 36, the Table of Showbread was made. In verse 16, the Vessels of the Table were made. In verses 17 through 24, the Lampstand or the Golden Menorah was made. In verses 25 through 29, the altar of incense was made. In verse 29 of chapter 36, <clears throat> the holy anointing oil and the pure incense were made according to the art of perfumers. In Exodus chapter 38, we had the altar of burnt offering, the labor, and the hangings of the court. In verses 1 through 7, the altar of burnt offering was made. In verse 8, the laver or the wash bowl for the priest was made. In verses 9 through 20, the hangings of the court were made. In verses 21 through 31, the service the service of the tabernacle was made. Or the, um, yeah, the service of the tabernacle. And then in Exodus, Exodus chapter 39, we had the garment garments of Aaron and his sons made. In verses 1 through 31 of chapter 39, the garments of Aaron and his sons were made. These were the priestly garments, which included the mitre with its plate, the breastplate, the ephod, the robe of the ephod, the girdle, the drawers or the breeches, the coat, and the bonnets or the caps for Aaron's sons were made. In verses 32 through 43, 
The children brought all the items that were made unto Moses for him to inspect their work. And Moses saw that they had done according as the Lord has, had commanded them, and Moses blessed them. In Exodus chapter 40, at the beginning of chapter 40, verses 1 through 33, Moses and the children set up the tabernacle and put everything in its place as the Lord had commanded. And in, then in verse 33, Moses finished all the work. Now we're going to pick it up today in verse 34, and we're going to read uh, verse 34 through the end of chapter 40. So with that, with the word of wisdom from our Father in Yeshua's precious name, the book of Exodus, chapter 40, verse 34, and it reads, and this was right after Moses had finished the work, back in verse 33. So verse 34, Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. This is that Shekinah glory. 35. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation, because the cloud abode therein, or thereon, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. 36. And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. Now, uh, this continued until Moses' death, when the ark, which till then was carried in the midst of the host, took its place and went before them. And you can document that in Joshua chapter 3, verses 3 through 6, and verse 11. 37. But if the cloud were not taken up, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. So if the cloud abode upon upon the tabernacle, then the children of Israel did not journey, or they didn't move until the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle. 38. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night. Of course, our Heavenly Father is a consuming fire. Hebrews chapter 12, the last verse, will document that. In the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeyings. All right, and that is going to complete our book of Exodus. And I love you guys for studying, and gals, for studying God's Word, chapter by chapter and verse by verse with me. More importantly, God loves you for it. He really does. When He looks down and sees His children, especially in this final generation, studying His Word, He's pleased with them and blessings will follow you know that's where um that's where you receive that spiritual food that keeps you uh full of peace and having that peace of mind for there's no other no other place to find peace and and that peace of mind other than god's word and god's word will keep you from that deception of this end times that's going to come upon the whole world when the false messiah shows up at the sixth trump with his fallen angels pretending to be God. You know, if if you're not read in God's word or you don't study under a teacher that teaches God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, whereby you know that the false Messiah comes at the sixth trump and the true Christ doesn't show up at the seventh trump, then more than likely, whenever Satan shows up at the sixth trump in his spiritual body, working all those miracles on the side of men, more than likely you're going to be deceived. And you don't want to make that mistake, beloved, of worshiping Satan, thinking that he is Christ. And as it is written in the book of Revelation, the whole world is going to whore after Satan, um, committing that spiritual adultery, worshiping him, thinking that he is Christ. But the good news is, is that God wrote you this love letter uh, whereby you don't have to suffer that deception and he foretells us all things. I mean, what a wonderful father that we have uh, for him to do that and not just leave us out in the dark guessing. You know, Satan will leave you guessing. He is unstable and wicked. He is a liar and a murderer, 
a, a, a spiritual murder of souls. But when you read that word of God and you put on that gospel armor, then you can stand against the fiery darts of Satan. And in the name of Jesus Christ, you have power over him. Uh, Luke chapter 10, verses 17, 18, and 19 will document that. You know, you don't have to be scared of Satan and his little evil spirits. You know, there's not one behind every bush, but there are evil spirits in this, in this generation and throughout time. And if you're not a true Christian, and if you, if you don't know how to use that authority that God gave us in, in Christ's name, then you can be had by those evil spirits and they'll have their way with you. But being a Christian, you know, you can boldly um, rebuke Satan in the name of Jesus Christ and he will flee. He has no other choice. Or you can just let him have, have his way and his evil spirits have their way with your family. It's up to you. Uh, our Heavenly Father has given us every tool that we need to fight against the enemy and to be able to survive in this final generation while not only just surviving, but thriving as Christians. You know, as Christians, we don't give ground, we take ground. And there's no reason to let the enemy work into your family and cause strife and, and arguments and anxiety and things like that. When you have this Word of God that will lead you, it will guide you, it will direct you, and it will, it will give you that peace within your family and the ability to overcome any hardships that you might suffer uh, you know it, it's just it's a beautiful thing to um, learn our father's thoughts emotions and understand his plan for salvation and and what he's given us and that authority over the enemy it really is it's an awesome thing and I love him for that so I implore you to get in God's Word every day you know well first if you're not a Christian uh, I would suggest you consider uh, repenting for your ways if you desire to do that. Of course, you can't con God. But if you want to uh, change your ways and gain that eternal life, you need to first repent uh, sincerely and then get in God's Word and study His Word every day. You know, And don't forget to tell Him that you love Him. Um, there's not many of His children in this final generation that are studying his word chapter by chapter and verse by verse and a lot of people just leave God out of their life and totally leave them leave him out of the equation uh, of of their life every day and it's a sad sad thing that's going on but it doesn't have to happen like I said he's giving you this word um, us this word this the love letter that he wrote to you and you know it takes something on your part um, to get close to him and to know him you've got to do a little bit of work yourself you've got to study a little bit and you know if you don't understand just pray to the father and ask him to help you understand and he will help you understand I, I can attest for that because he helps me understand the scriptures all the time and you know that's where the blessings come from is his word and loving him you know, Hosea chapter 6, verse 6, he said, I don't want your burnt offerings, I don't want your sacrifices, I want your love and your mercy. You know, he's just like a, he's just like a father, um, you know, an earthly father that has, has a child. You know, they, they, they want that child to, to contact them and tell them that they love them and, you know, just not forget about them and not only contact them when they need some help or they're in trouble. You know, God will bless you and your family and he'll give you that peace of mind that you need to survive in this generation. And, and like I said, not only survive, but thrive and be blessed if you'll just do a little bit of work yourself and study his word, tell him you love him. And, you know, you can talk to him just like you talk to your friend or your, your mother or your father. I mean, he's there. He is listening. Um, you may not can see him with your eyes. But you can sense him in your spirit and you can definitely sense that Holy Spirit that will warm you and comfort you if you're a Christian and if you love our Heavenly Father. And if you're his enemy, it will burn you. Um, it will sear your conscience. And 
And again, I thank him for that authority that he's given us in Luke chapter 10, 17, 18, and 19, that those evil spirits and Satan, as soon as you, as soon as you use that power in the name of Jesus Christ, they're gone. They flee. They don't want any part of it. And I thank him for that. So with that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed the book of Exodus as much as I have enjoyed studying and bringing it to you. Um, don't miss the next lecture. We're going to start a new book. It'll be a New Testament book. I'm not sure which book it'll be yet, but I'm going to pray about that tonight, and we'll see uh, what we got tomorrow. All right. Love you guys. See you next time. And gals.